Well, good morning. Good to see you all this morning. Glad you could be with us here at Oak Hill Baptist Church this morning. Uh, let's go to the Lord in word of prayer before we start. Father, thank you so much for your blessings and your grace upon us. Thank you for being with us this week, watching over us all, keeping us all safe. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to be in your house this morning. Lord, we just continue to ask you to be with our pastor as he's away, as he's over in Israel. I pray your hand will continue to be upon him. Lord, you bring him back home safe later this week. Be with his family, Lord, and help them during this time. Pray your blessings upon them. Lord, we pray for those that are sick this morning, not able to be here with us, those that may be traveling, Lord. Lord, there's many on our hearts this morning, and we just ask you to be with those. And Lord, today, if there's one that doesn't know you, may today be their day of salvation. We pray for our choir and our musicians this morning, Lord, as we lift our voices in praise to you. With Brother Doyle, as he stands before us this morning, just give him your word. Open our hearts to hear it, Lord. Lord, we love you. It's in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Once again, welcome. Glad to have you here with us today. Make you aware of a few things that are going on. It's not just a few things. There's lots going on, it seems like, uh, here uh, this month. Very busy month. Maybe we'll keep that uh, bulletin with you to keep up on everything that is going on. Uh, this afternoon at 6, we are having our Thanksgiving Christmas dinner. Encourage you to come be with us here at the church tonight. The church is providing all the meats. If you could uh, bring a vegetable and dessert and other things there, um, we'll get together and we'll have a great time uh, this evening at 6 o'clock. Men's Bible study tomorrow night at 7. Uh, of course, our pastor is over in Israel. He'll be back Friday, uh, and April's ready for him to be back, I'm sure. Uh, and then Wednesday night, uh, Bible study on Wednesday night there, you see, we're going to be transitioning. We've, we've decided that uh, with the cold weather coming and hit, trying to heat buildings and everything, we're going to move back to the fellowship hall for Wednesday evening services now and only have to heat that, that building back there rather than heat everything out this way uh, just to be more efficient uh, with the size of crowds that we normally have. Now, if you all will come and fill that up, we'll move right back out here. If you'll come Wednesday nights and fill the back up, we'll move it right back out here into the sanctuary. So I encourage you to come be with us. Uh, I think youth is going to suspend meeting for just a little while while we're back there. So uh, youth, we encourage you to come be part of the evening service anyway there and be with us for a time of Bible study on um, Wednesday night there at 7 o'clock. Uh, next Sunday, uh, getting way closer to Christmas, we will be having a candlelight service next Sunday at 6 o'clock, and then we'll have a time of, of snacks back in the back afterward, time of fellowship back there in the back following that next Sunday evening. Uh, Lottie Moon. Uh, we are collecting for Lottie Moon Christmas offering, and as you know, 100% of that goes to our missionaries. Uh, so I encourage you to, to participate in that. They are not doing the the uh, Christmas card like we did in, in years past where you would bring your cards and they'd give them out and you'd, you'd pay them, you'd give an offering for that and for them to do that service. There is a Christmas tree out there though. If you'll look on that Christmas tree, there's envelopes on it and if you'll pick up that envelope, that's what you're saying, I would, this is the amount that I would like to give to it and we'll ask you to give that amount to uh, the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. So. Uh, remember that as you head out the door this morning. Uh, I think that's about all I've got this morning. Has anybody else got anything? Anything I forgot? Oh, thank you. Yes. As most of you know, Miss Colleen Mills passed away. Uh, I think it was Thursday. Uh, the choir has been asked to sing this afternoon at her funeral. That, that will happen at 2 o'clock. At Appalachian, the funeral will visitation is from 1 to 2 if you'd like to go visitation for the family. But everyone who can come and sing with us this evening at 2 o'clock down at Appalachian uh, for the funeral service for Miss Colleen Mills. Miss uh, Judy's playing the piano and she will be here uh, right after this morning service, after JD finishes, to come up here to go over the songs with me. So if you would like to stay and would stay, that'd be great. Um, but I know it's last minute, so but she'll be here to go over the songs before the funeral. Okay. All right. Thanks, Greg. Anybody else got anything this morning? All right. If not, we'll continue our service. If you'll get your handbooks out, we're going to sing Joy to the World, page 87. 
page 87 in your hymn book, Joy to the World. page 88. Hark the herald angels sing. Page 88.
to serve, stay to spirit fed. Choirs they sing, hear their prayers, hold this message. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. <laughs>
My name is not a hunter, I'm holder, but uh, it's a joy to be here. I appreciate the uh, opportunity to stand before you. It's, uh, it's been a little bit of a, a, a while since I have had the opportunity to preach. I preached at Crestview Baptist uh, several, um, several months ago, enjoyed that so much, and it's a joy to be with you. Uh, April said Hunter uh, texted her and said he was at the Dead Sea. Now, I was at the Dead Sea several years ago, but when I was there, I wasn't even sick yet. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm glad to be here. When you get my age, you're glad to be anywhere. But I do appreciate uh, the opportunity. Uh, I heard a man preach one time. He preached an hour and a half, and somebody said, why did you preach so long? He said, well, I've been saving it up. I just hadn't had an opportunity to preach in a while. But uh, I promise you that uh, I won't keep you uh, long. I did not have uh, breakfast this morning. 
And so if I preach too long, I'll just waste away to nothing. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the Gospel of Matthew, the first chapter. And of course, maybe you've not read the first chapter. Uh, recently, it's, um, it's kind of like the fifth chapter of Genesis. It's about all those genealogies about people who, who married people and then they begat children and they died. And of course, I love the fifth chapter because it, of Genesis because it deals, uh, it talks about Enoch. That Enoch walked with God and he was not and, and God took him. And so uh, what, a, what a great blessing. Her old black preacher one time say that Enoch and God were, were walking together. And God said, look, it's getting late. Uh, we're closer to my house than we are yours. And so uh, Enoch went home with the Lord Jesus. But Genesis, uh, excuse me, Matthew chapter 1 is, uh, uh, there's a lot of words that, uh, that are difficult to pronounce. And I thought about getting Pete to read this for me. Uh, but um, I, I, just, I decided I could, I could probably mess it up as good as he would. But in uh, the Gospel of Matthew chapter 1, uh, beginning at verse 1, and we're going to read uh, through verse, verses 16. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begot Isaac, Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot Judah and his brothers. Judah begot Perez and Zerah by Tamar. Perez begot Hezron, and Hezron begot Ram. Ram begot Amenadab, Amenadab begot Nashon, and Nashon begot Salmon. Salmon begot Boaz by Rahab, Boaz begot Obed by Ruth, Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse begot David the king. David the king begot Solomon by her who'd been the wife of Uriah. Solomon begot Rehoboam, Rehoboam begot Abijah, and Abijah begot Asa. Asa begot Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat begot Joram, and Joram begot Uzziah. Uzziah begot jo uh, Jotham, Jotham begot Ahaz, and Ahaz begot Hezekiah. Hezekiah begot Manasseh, Manasseh begot Ammon and Ammon begot Josiah. Josiah begot Jeconiah and his brothers about the time they were carried away to Babylon. And after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconiah begot Sheltiel, and Sheltiel begot Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel begot Abiud, Abiud begot Eliakim, and Eliakim begot Azor. Azor begot Zadok, Zadok begot Achim, and Achim begot Eliud. Eliud begot uh, Eliezer, Eliezer begot Mathan, and Mathan begot Jacob. And Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. May we bow together in prayer. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be here. I thank you for this church. Lord, I thank you for the believers here as we meet together in your name. Father, I thank you for uh, Pastor Hunter and his family as they lead this church. And Father, I pray that you would continue to bless uh, Hunter on his uh, expedition of Israel, that he'll see things and and remember things, and the scriptures will come alive in a new way. Father, I pray that you would forgive me as I stand and preach the word of God. And Lord, if there's one here who doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, Lord, I pray today would be their birthday in Christ Jesus. For it's in the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. In this passage of scripture, we read a bunch of names and we've read um, 
a, a bunch of people we didn't know. And of course, as I, I read this, I was thankful that my, my parents named me after an angel. My first name is, is Michael. I said that one time and somebody said, there wasn't an angel named Doyle. And I said, well, no, I was, um, I, the angel was after my mom. The Doyle was after my dad. Uh, but as we study this passage of scripture, we're going to look at something uh, kind of unique, I think, as we've studied this. I want us to, uh, to think about skeletons in the Christmas tree. Skeletons in the Christmas tree. Now, all of us, uh, myself included, have skeletons in their closet. Um, I've got, well, let me change that. My wife had skeletons in her closet. Her first cousin um, murdered her husband. And then 10 years later, she married the baseball coach at Durham High School. And she ended up murdering him. And of course, if you doubt that, you can look on YouTube there was a book that was written uh, called Before He Wakes by an author in Greensboro, but her name was, uh, was Barbara Steger. And you can look on YouTube and there's about uh, four or five videos. In fact, there was a, a movie that Jacqueline Smith played her uh, as the, the murderer of her, her um her husband's, and uh, let me tell you that uh, her cousin looked nothing like Jacqueline Smith. Uh, but uh, you can go on YouTube, the whole movie's uh, there. And of course, uh, when my wife would, and I guess it was lovingly, when she said, I'm going to kill you, I want you to know it got my attention. And what got my attention further, I, am, uh, I have a concealed carry permit, and, uh, and sometimes that's enough just to, uh, to, to be a hindrance to somebody. But it kind of bothered me when she said, honey, I want you to teach me how to shoot your pistol. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I don't know if I want to sleep be uh, beside her anymore or not. Uh, but you can look online and it's, uh, it's notorious and it's, uh, it's famous. And of course, our, uh, our family get togethers were usually interesting. People would say, do you think Barbara killed her husband? And somebody would say, no, no, they, I don't think she did. But she was convicted of killing her second husband and she is still in jail. And I'm thankful for that because... Uh, this, uh, this sermon is being taped and she might hear it. <laughs> and, um, and I would just uh, as soon not, not see her if I got my choice. But all of us here today probably have skeletons in, in our, our closet. I had, a, had a, a, a man say one time that my wife yells at me all the time. And I said, what? And, uh, you know, he had AIDS he had one in each ear, so she had to holler at him. But I want us to look at three things about skeletons in the Christmas tree. I want you to notice, first of all, it's revealed in the genealogy of the Savior. Uh, you look at this and you read these uh, people and you say, I don't know any of those people. I don't know many of those people that uh, uh, don't even uh, know how to pronounce their name. But the genealogy is given for three reasons. It reveals that Christ fulfilled his promise. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm thankful for that because I am a sinner saved by grace. And of course, if you are saved, you are saved by grace. But all the way back in Genesis 3.15, uh, God promised that there would be a savior through the seed of woman. And of course, we see that, uh, that great genealogy there. Uh, God fulfilled his promise. 
And when God tells us something, you can believe it. Now, usually my dad told me something. If I was misbehaving in the car, he'd say, boy, you're going to get a whooping when you get home. Now, you know, whooping is the country term. You might say uh, spanking or punishment. Uh, or a lady one time says, uh, you'll never spank one of my children. Well, I never spanked one of hers, but I spanked mine often. And it's kind of like Billy Graham said, his mom uh, had a strap hanging on the wall and she always sang, I need thee every hour. <laughs> And I was about to, I just need to tell you, I was a brat. But God fulfilled his promise, but it was also in fulfillment of a plan. You see, the devil tried to thwart God's plan. He tried to prevent the Savior from being born. And yet when he was born and when he was nailed on an old rugged cross, the old devil thought, well, boy, I got you right where I want you. But you see, on the cross was exactly, uh, Isaiah said it pleased God to bruise him for our iniquity. But then thirdly, not only in fulfillment of a promise, in fulfillment of a plan, but it was also in the face of people. Now, you, I don't know how you think. I remember when I used to think, I try not to do it anymore. It makes my head hurt. But I remember sitting in church as a, as a teenager thinking, boy, all these people got it together. Except me, I don't have it together. And people would say, uh, do you have it together? Raise your hand. And, and people would raise their hand. And I would raise my hand too. Because uh, you see, I didn't have it together. So I kind of lied about it. But you see, these uh, people in, in Matthew chapter 1 are just plain old folks like we are. I heard a man say that he had married an angel. Uh, she was always up in the air harping on something. <laughs> but you see, I want you to notice, secondly, not only revealed in the genealogy, but I want you to notice skeletons in the Christmas tree as revealed in the guilt of the sinner. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, th there are four women that are mentioned in this passage of Scripture, and God's not picking on women. I want you to, I want you to notice that. Many women are the way they are because of the way we men are. Amen? And sometimes, well, as one told the truth, he only told the truth because his wife made him. <laughs> but I want you to notice it's revealed, uh, first of all, the guilt of the sinner through the life of Tamar. Now look at verse 3. Judah begot Perez and Zerah by Tamar. And now if you go to Genesis 38, this passage of Scripture would be X-rated. You say, well, there's not any X rated in the, in the scriptures. There is in, in Genesis chapter uh, 38. And some of you teenagers, you kind of turn over your Bible, you know, to see what it says. But uh, Judah was the brother of Joseph. The son of Judah um, was named Ur. That's kind of a neat name, isn't it? But he married Tamar. And uh, God killed Ur because of his sinfulness. And, and so as the Jewish tradition was, the next born son was to marry the widow that was left behind. In this case, Ur, uh, his brother, was uh, married. The next uh, brother in line, his name was Onan. And that was Ur's brother. God killed him because of his wickedness. So you see, Onan died. And then uh, and uh, God, uh, Judah promised Tamar that she could marry his youngest son when he got old enough. Now, ladies, I just need to warn you. 
um, she ought to known she was in trouble when his name was Sheila. But Sheila grew up and he never married Tamar. Judah forgot or he either thought, well, I've done lost her, I've done lost Onan, and I don't want to lose Sheila. So uh, in the meantime, Judah's wife, uh, who was the daughter of Shua, died. And Judah and a good friend of his, who was named Hira the Adulamite, went to Timnah to bear sheep. And so what Tamar did, she knew her father-in-law had gone to shear sheep. So what she did, she dressed up as a prostitute. And she solicited Judah, um, who uh, actually put the affair on credit. You know, Judah told uh, Tamar, who was his daughter-in-law, who didn't know that it was his daughter-in-law, he solicited her and she said, well, what are you going to pay me? And he said, well, I'll give you a goat. Now, ladies, that's your heart desire, isn't it? <laughs> for your, uh, for your uh, husband to, to give a goat. But anyhow, she took a, a goat and uh, yet Tamar said, what are you going to give me as collateral? And so Judah said, I'll give you my signet, my cord, and my staff as collateral. And so when Judah got back home, he, uh, he sent by a friend of his uh, the money to give to the prostitute that he met in Timnah. And yet they said there's no, there's no prostitute uh, in that area. And so, um, anyhow, uh, three months later, Judah, excuse me, uh, Tamar became pregnant. And you know what Judah said? He said, that despicable hussy of a daughter-in-law, we're going to take her out and we're going to burn her. And you know what happened? Tamar said, Whose is this signet and cord and staff that I have? And Judah knew, he said, she was more righteous than I was. And, uh, and of course, uh, uh, Tamar had twins by her father-in-law. So those twins were both the, the father of the of um, uh, the children of Judah, and were, uh, and of course also uh, uh, Judah was the grandfather grandfather of the twins. Now, let me tell you something that saves a lot on Christmas presents. You know, you're kind of giving them to your children and your your, uh, your grandchildren at the same th same time. But she had twins. One of them was named Perez. The other named Zera and Perez was the firstborn of the tribe of Judah through which the Savior would come. Tamar had a pretty sordid reputation, but she was in the Christmas tree line. But I want you to notice the second, the second woman was Rahab. Now, Rahab was known by a few things. Uh, Rahab was a Canaanite. She was a Gentile. She was an enemy of God. She was a harlot in the city of Jericho. She was most noted for telling a lie. And she uh, was saved. You remember she hung the scarlet uh, rope uh, out of the city of Jericho. And she and her family were saved. Um, she married a man named Salmon who had a son named Boaz, and she was the great, great grandmother of, of David mentioned in Hebrews 11 and James 2. Now, can you imagine when the family got together? Well, what did your great, great grandmother do? Well, she was in business. I'll just leave it at that. But then there was not only Tamar and Rahab. I want you to notice that in the, the third one, in verse 5, notice what it says. 
Salmon begat Boaz by Rahab. Boaz begat Obed by Ruth. Obed begat Jesse. Now, the book of Ruth, it tells us that, uh, of course, Ruth was a Moabite. And you say, well, so what? What's bad about being a Moabite? Give you a little bit of history. Do you remember when the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed? And you remember uh, after that, uh, um, uh, left uh, the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. And it tells us that uh, Lot's daughters decided, well, we're never going to be able to have children uh, because all of the men are dead. And so they concocted this uh, marvelous idea of getting their father drunk and, and each one of them sleeping with them so they would uh, be able to have children. Now, out of those two illicit affairs, there were two kids. One of them was named Bo, uh, Moab and the other was named Ben-Ami or the Ammonites. And uh, the Ammonites were strict enemies of the nation of Israel. But Ruth married a man by the name of Elimelech uh, who, um, that married Naomi. Uh, had two sons, Malon and Chilon, moved to Moab because of a famine. And it tells us that uh, Malon married Ruth, Chilion married Orpha. Elimelech, Malon, and Chilion died. Naomi decides to go back to the land of Judah, and Ruth decides to go with her. Now, at many weddings, this is, this is quoted from the book of Ruth. Entreat me not to leave you or to return from following you. For where you go, I will go. And uh, uh, where you uh, live, I will live. Um, and your people uh, shall be my people. In that, Ruth marries Boaz. They have a child named Obed. Obed had a child named Jesse who had a son named David. And Ruth was the great grandmother of David. And then I want you to notice uh, uh, Bathsheba is mentioned in this passage. Look at what it says in verse 6. And Jesse begot David the king. David the king begot Solomon by her who had been the wife of Uriah. You're very familiar with the illicit affair that David had with uh, Bathsheba. In fact, the scriptures doesn't even call Bathsheba David's wife. It calls her who had been the wife of Uriah. You say, boy, that's a pretty sordid bunch of four people that are in there. You know, I'd be ashamed to call them my relatives. Well, I want you to notice lastly, the skeletons in the Christmas tree is revealed in the grace of the Savior. Now, I want you to notice, first of all, the light of their sin. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if we took time and we're not going to, and I said, we're going to recognize everybody, and you're going to get up and tell us what your greatest sin is. Wonder what we'd think about. We'd say, well, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to tell people. I, I get tickled at Hunter. He talks about his, uh, his ancestors. And of course, all of us, you know, we've got skeletons in the closet. We've got things people uh, don't want to know about. Now, the reason I told you about Barbara Sager was because she was a skeleton in my wife's family. My family was perfect. We never told a lie. We never committed a sin. We're just perfect. I just wait around thinking, boy, 
What can I, what, can, what sin can I commit that I haven't done yet? Now, we wouldn't do that. But you see, the grace of the Savior is in light of their sin. We see those four women uh, here. We see Tamar and we see uh, uh, Bathsheba. Uh, we see uh, uh, Tamar and we see the others that we mentioned. But it was not only in light of their sin, we see the grace of the Savior in light of their salvation. I wonder what skeleton you've got in your closet. Let me tell you something. If you're not a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you still got that skeleton in your closet. And yet when you stand before God, and we're all going to do that, we're going to stand before God and give an account of the deeds uh, in the flesh, whether good or bad, Paul uh, tells us uh, in Romans uh, we're going to stand and give an account of ourselves and every secret thing is going to be known. Boy, I remember uh, being a teenager. My dad was strict about getting home on time. I'm not sure he cared a whole lot where I went just so I got home. And, and you teenagers, you would appreciate this, but my first car was a classic it was a 1961 Rambler station wagon, and it had squeaky shocks. And yet, when I would get in, and I rarely came in on time, but when I uh, go over the curving, the shock would squeak, and I would see the bedroom light come on. And I'm thinking, what lie can I tell my daddy now? I thought about telling him I got uh, caught by the railroad tracks, but the way I went, there were not any railroad tracks. I started to say, Dad, I, I, I had a flat tire, but I, I didn't have a flat tire. I could have told him that one time my car, my car would get stuck between, I don't know, it's between first and reverse. And the reason I wore jeans to school was not because they were fashionable, but it's because when my car got stuck, I had to crawl under it. But you see, ladies and gentlemen, I'm so thankful for God's amazing grace. Maybe you're here today and there are things in your life and you're thinking, boy, I hope nobody finds out a thing. I, I'm ashamed of those things I've done. I hope, I hope nobody finds out anything about me. But let me tell you something. You can be clean today before you leave this building. It doesn't matter what you got in your family tree. It doesn't matter how bad your sins are. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But the blood of Jesus cleanseth us from how much unrighteousness? All. Man, I love that word. When I stand before God, God's going to say, well, there are a few sins that my my uh, righteousness didn't cover. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, he covered all of my unrighteousness. You're here today and you can trust him. You say, how do I do that? Man, I'd be embarrassed. Let me tell you something. If you're embarrassed to stand before Jesus in this building, you don't have a chance of standing for him outside of this building. And you can be gloriously saved. Let's bow together. Father, thank you so much. And Lord, we see those sinful folks. And Lord, I didn't mean to pick on women. But Lord, all of those in the family tree were sinners in need of a Savior. And it didn't matter who their great-great-great-grandmother was or who their great-great-grandmother was. They can be cleansed by the precious blood of Jesus. Father, maybe there's one here today who doesn't know you as Lord and Savior. And Father, I pray today that they'll, that they'll come. And Lord, you called us publicly because you said if you confess man, I'll confess you. Uh, but Lord, you also said, if you deny me before men, 
I'll deny you before the angels of heaven. Father, I pray for salvation, for rededication. And Lord, I pray that folks that have never trusted you as Lord and Savior would receive that great gift of Jesus. For it's in his precious name we pray. Amen. Our hymn of invitation. It's page 321. 321. Has God spoken? If you need to come, I'll pray with you. I'll pray for you. The altar's open. Would you come as God speaks?